So a good place to start um, when talking about aging is, is actually the meaning of the word aging because it's very confusing. Um, because it's a word that has different meanings uh, and when people talk about aging they can mean different things. So uh, for example aging can refer to the passage of time, calendar aging, and you, you grow older just in terms of how many years you've been alive. Um, but aging can also sometimes refer to the changes that happen as you get older, any kind of changes. Uh, and those changes can be negative, but they can be neutral, uh, or they can be beneficial. So you talk about um, maturational changes during adulthood. You, you mature and that's, that means you're improving. Um, so that's an aspect of aging which is positive. Um, but as a biologist, studying aging, what I'm interested in is the deteriorative part of, part of aging and, and what biologists call that is senescence. So senescence really refers to all the deteriorative changes that happen as, as you get older. Um, so a point of confusion, I think, created by all the different meanings of the word aging is really the relationship between aging and disease. And this is a very uh, controversial topic. So according to medical tradition and what, uh, what doctors are, are taught uh, in medical school, um, you can make a distinction between um, a so-called normal aging um, and aging related diseases. So uh, this is a popular idea about aging, that aging itself as a process uh, is not a bad thing. It's sort of, it's normal, it's natural, it's kind of part of the life cycle. Um, whereas uh, the bad part of aging are the diseases of aging. Um, and the reason for wanting to understand aging is, is that um, at the present time it's, it's become now the main cause of disease in the world. So most of the folks who, who watch this uh, little movie uh, are going to eventually die as a consequence of aging. They'll die from things like cancer, which is largely an age disease, disease of aging, dementia, cardiovascular disease like stroke uh, or heart attack or um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or this is a disease of the lung um, uh, and uh, many, many other kinds of disease dementia, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, all of these are all part of the process of aging. So um, according to the view of, of some, they would argue that if you're studying aging, if you're trying to uh, work on aging and, and sort of make use of the science of aging, uh, what you want to do is to um, allow people to age uh, naturally and normally. Um, but uh, remain free of the diseases of aging. So there's kind of the good aging and the bad aging. Um, and I think my understanding of, of, of that notion is really it's a pragmatic uh, approach uh, to aging which has been developed by doctors who uh, often if, you know, if I go to my doctor, you know, I'm in my late 50s and I say, look, I'm worried because my eyesight's not so good. I said something wrong with my eyes. And she'll say, you know, no, 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 you know, you're in your late 50s, it's just normal aging of the eyes, you know. Or if I say, you know, my skin's wrinkling, you know, and I'm a bit worried, you know, and she'll say, no, 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 that's just your age, it's just not normal aging of your skin. Um, but from a biological perspective, from, from the point of view of biological processes, um, there isn't really any basis for this division between diseases of aging and kind of normal aging. Um, and here we're talking about senescence, we're talking about all of the different aspects of senescence. We're not talking about maturation and calendar aging, we're talking about deterioration. Because um, in actual fact, the fact that my eyesight is failing, is, it's because of deterioration of my, uh, of, of my eyes. Or if my skin is wrinkling, I mean it doesn't hurt or anything, it's not uh, a disability or anything. But from a biological perspective, what's happening here is the beginnings of the essentially degeneration of my skin. And uh, as I get older, it will get become more and more severe and my eyesight will get worse and worse. So the division between kind of normal aging, normal senescence, if you like, and diseases of aging is actually, in scientific terms, it has no real 
rationale behind it. And in fact, um, this division between aging and disease is something that is quite permeable. Uh, and in fact, over the years, increasingly conditions that are part of aging, which were once viewed as normal aging, such as uh, muscle wasting or sarcopenia, uh, or even Alzheimer's disease, are now regarded as, as diseases. When I was a boy, Alzheimer's disease only referred to the hereditary Alzheimer's disease, which you develop when you're in, in your middle age. And the later dementia was called normal senility. So you wouldn't say grandma's got Alzheimer's disease. You'd say, oh, grandma's just a bit senile. It's just nature, you know, taking its course, right? Um, so um, viewed in that, you know, from that point of view, this, this division between normal aging and, and uh, diseases of aging is actually, uh, uh, it has no rational basis. Um, and in fact, all of it is essentially pathological. The whole process of senescence is a pathological process. It's all kind of a disease state. So f looking at it from that point of view, I don't think from scientifically it's a controversial thing to say that senescence is fundamentally a disease process. Yeah? And when I'm thinking at my eyes, eyesight starting to go, my skin starting to wrinkle, these are just the beginning stages of a massive disease process that eventually I'll die from. Um, so what's sometimes stated is what scientists working on the biology of aging should be doing, which is that they should be looking to treat aging-related diseases, but not aging itself, really makes no sense whatsoever. All of it's bad. So intervening in any of it, any part of it, is something that is uh, what we should be doing. Ethically, it's the right thing to do, is to treat the whole aging process. Um, and I think this, 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 what I call the false dichotomy between aging and, and disease is something which is, um, is and has been a kind of an obstruction to, uh, uh, to investigate, to, to research on, um, on the biology of aging. So for example, uh, just to give a kind of slightly silly example, um, at the moment the, uh, the Medical Research Council, which is one of the main funding agencies in the UK, don't really fund research on the basic biology of aging because they say aging is not a disease. Yeah? Whereas uh, 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 um, biological and, uh, um, Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council, which is the main funding agency for biology, uh, will uh, be reluctant to fund you if you say you're interested in how aging gives rise to aging-related diseases because they say they don't, they don't fund disease. Um, and similarly, the um, the uh, uh, Age UK, which is the main charity uh, for, for um, raising money for, um, for the elderly. It's a very good charity. But when the charity formed from the merger of two, uh, two smaller charities, they stopped funding on uh, research on basic biology of aging. And I think my understanding was that that's partly because they found the notion of viewing aging as a disease as something rather unwholesome and even sort of discriminatory and somehow disrespectful to the elderly. So I think, I think this uh, is something that has caused quite a lot of confusion. So aging, therefore, is really um, a disease syndrome. It's really something which uh, is the cause of now most of the diseases worldwide. And so uh, it's therefore very important to really to, to understand, you know, what is this process, this process of senescence? Why does it happen? What causes it? Uh, which makes it... it extraordinarily interesting uh, you know to work on as a scientist you've got what is really the cause of uh, of most of the disease in the world now and yet it's really not understood it's it's remarkable so um, one of the reasons why it's not well understood is, is because it's a very very complex process it's almost certainly something which is controlled from our own genome uh, and it's sort of defeated really the attempts by scientists to understand it uh, and so the approach that my lab takes, and quite a lot of other labs also, is to say, is the reductionist approach. So the idea is to say, take a very, very simple organism, as simple as you can find that actually exhibits this phenomenon of senescence, uh, and try to work out uh, thoroughly and completely the nature of, of the biology of aging in a simple organism. So what we work on here is, a, is a, an animal, 
but it's very small and very, very short lived. And it's a type of worm. Uh, it's called Cenorhabditis elegans. It's a nematode worm. They live uh, in the wild on rotting fruit and rotting plant stems. Uh, so they are a complex animal. They have a, you know, a nervous system and a, a reproductive system and behavior and so on. But they grow old and die with only, within only about two to three weeks. So, uh, so really, that, this, is, this is the goal of the research. The idea is that if you could solve aging in this one simple, simple, simple organism, then you would be able to discover uh, the basic principles uh, that underlie aging as a process. So we're really looking for very, very fundamental principles, um, similar in their level of generality to things like the uh, the germ theory of disease of, of Pasteur and, and, and Koch, you know, the, the, the something that gives you a fundamental basic insight into the nature of aging. So that's really what this work is trying to achieve. And if so, if we understand it in this simple organism, then I think that should open the way to really being able to understand where Alzheimer's disease comes from. Why, when you get old, do you get osteoarthritis? You know, what happens to the lungs as you get older? Why do you develop? chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, you know, are there, are there general principles that underlie how senescence, how aging is giving rise to all of those diseases? Uh, and then hopefully through that one can find ways to prevent um, those uh, illnesses from developing in the first place. Um, and what's exciting working with the animal models is that you can actually intervene in aging in these simple animals. You can actually uh, manipulate the aging process in such a way that you can speed it up or you can slow it down quite considerably. And when you do that, all of the funny diseases that, uh, that the worms get as they get older, you can slow them down uh, and prevent them from developing. So the animals stay healthier for longer and then they live longer. So uh, somehow in the worm there has to be some big secrets about the nature of aging. And I think uh, I and Quite a lot of other labs around the world are all kind of pursuing these secrets. Kind of, they're like a, a kind of holy grail with, for the biology of aging to, to have some fundamental knowledge of aging and what's actually causing it.